Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord who God's life. So we love to make spirituality our thing. Not just internal in my heart, but private. See, nobody likes being told what to believe by an organized religion. Nobody wants to associate with people that you might not like. It's easy to understand why folks don't want the baggage of an institution which has erred in the past and isn't all that popular right now and needs your support always. So it's a whole lot easier to just say spirituality is in our hearts, our minds. We will sort it all out privately. You do yours. I'll do mine. We'll sort of keep it like our underpants. Wear whatever you want. Just don't show anyone or talk about it to strangers. Because, well, if you talk about your private spirituality and it disagrees with somebody else's, you know, what then? See, usually we just sort of dismiss it. Um, because when we try and figure out whose is right and whose is wrong, we either have to talk about one of two things. It's usually the concept of inner peace, which honestly you can get from a lot of things, really even quite ungodly things. Just escape all of your problems and run away from your responsibilities and your vocations and it feels kind of nice. Really, just lean into the sins which God calls evil and it pleases our hearts. Really, I mean, drugs. Just good old-fashioned looking down on everybody else. Really, really self-destructive and evil and wrong things can bring old Adam a whole lot of contentment. And so just trying to say that our religion must be right because we can feel content doesn't actually work when everybody doing awful things can feel just as content. And the only other real approach to trying to prove our religion based on these things is, is um, our, our ability to visit an afterlife, which proving it is kind of tough. Like, can your private spirituality get you to heaven? Can you pray your way to heaven? Which is really kind of the wrong question because honestly, even as a confessional Christian, as a, as a Lutheran, can you say, I can prove that I am going to heaven based on something that I do, something that I think, something even that I, I believe we end up having to try to make it look nice in ourselves that way. When spirituality is private, the only way to demonstrate it is in ourselves. And so I have to say that, you know, my spirituality makes me a good person by today's standards. Except that can change a lot. Like, not just even over time, like if 10 years ago versus today, 100 years ago versus today, even just distance. 50 miles down the road looks a lot different than out here. But in all of it, there's still never really proof because we are kind of asking the wrong questions. Forget about heaven that you can't prove. Forget about inner peace that can come from a lot of places. Let's ask one simple question. Can you pray your way to the resurrection? Can you rise from the dead? Because Jesus can. See, with private spirituality, it's our prayers and our works. But when we actually talk about the resurrection from the dead, it stops being about us at all and starts becoming about Jesus for us. Jesus rose from the dead. So if he does anything, commands anything, promises anything, what well, holds more weight than whatever you happen to hold in your heart? In the large catechism, Luther writes, But the scriptures teach thus, even though we collect in one mass the works of all the monks, however splendidly they may shine, they would not be as noble and as good as if God should pick up a straw. Why? Because the person is nobler and better. Here then, we must not estimate the person according to the works, but the works according to the person from whom they must derive their nobility. See, if you actually want to talk about spirituality, Root it where God works for us. And then it's a different conversation. So for Christians, your spirituality begins in your baptism. Baptism matters because the God who rose from the dead, the God who can do more than us, he gives it to you. God says he wants to save. And this is how he promises to deliver it through water joined to word. And all of the monks in all of the monasteries look really, really impressive when they all pray and they're singing and chanting on pitch. But apart from Christ, they cannot rise from the dead. But in him, they will. But the same is true with a little baby that you splash water on and say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit because God's word and command, it works. God does what he promises to do. It is his word that promises salvation. It is his work that delivers it. Look at what he does according to who he is. Can he rise from the dead? Everything else he does then comes with that. To quote a personal hero of mine, um, everything I do is the attitude of an award winner because I have won an award. 
See, we regard everything that God does in light of who he is. Everything in light of his victory over death found in his resurrection from the dead so that when we see his promises, we might behold his glory inside of them, even if they don't look outwardly all that impressive, even if sinners who have been baptized still sometimes fail to live up to their end of the deal. It is still God's word and command which do what they say. Our works then aren't by what we judge, but his works, which are far more glorious than our own because he rose from the dead. And then we can talk about baptized people in honesty. Your sin is bad, but that's why God forgives it. That's why he gives you baptism, to forgive your sin and institutions err. But that's why we go by the same word joined to water to guide us, not political expediency. In all of it, we regard God's works, God's word, God's resurrection from the dead. And if he wants to bind us together in his church through water joined to his word and their work, forgiveness of sins, rescue us from death and the devil and give eternal salvation to all who believe this, well, then you know what? His words and promises are enough for me. Baptism is more than enough. It is a precious gift from God because, well, the God who gives it rose from the dead.